All right, so I have two browsers open, two incognito tabs, and you know what that means. We are digging into WebSockets. So by the end of this video, we're gonna be able to type in this browser here, and then all the other users that have localhost 3000 up and that are listening um, are gonna be able to get these changes, and it's gonna happen over here. So we're gonna be basically syncing the editors across everyone's browsers. All right, so to do this, we are going to be using Socket IO, and that is going to be the main focus of this video. So what I have open right here is the Socket IO getting started chat, which we're basically going to base our application off of. So I'll link this below if you want to follow along, but we're going to start by creating this out. So I created a new folder, which I called mini Google Docs clone server, um, and it's empty right now and I have it up in the command line. And I'm gonna start by just saying yarn init dash y. And I'm going to add express and socket IO. And I'm gonna just build out the server in JavaScript as opposed to TypeScript because the server is so simple. I figured it would be easier just to create it in JavaScript for the couple lines that we're going to add. So here I'm going to say source slash index.js and I'm going to copy this bit here. And we're going to go down a little bit further in this example and we're going to grab the bit where they start dealing with socket IO. In this case, they're listening for a connection. So what you'll notice is happening here and we also should grab the import. is we're creating an instance of express and I'm gonna change these to const and then we're creating an HTTP server the reason why we're creating an HTTP server is this is what's gonna allow us to do the WebSocket or it's gonna listen for WebSocket connections um, I believe and we can get rid of this and you'll notice we are passing the HTTP into the socket IO instance um, and then in the IO instance we are waiting for a socket to connect here and then we're just doing a console log a user has connected. You also notice here we are listening for requests on port 4000 or 3000. I'm going to change it to port 4000. Um, and that's pretty much it. So the gist of this is when the server starts up, whenever a user connects with socket IO, it is going to just log a user has connected. So I'm going to start by just saying node source slash index.js and I have this instance up and running. So now we're going to come back to our, here's my console for the React application. So I have the server up and running, and we are going to connect to our server that we just set up. So to do that, we are going to be using the socket IO client. And this is just the GitHub readme for this. And I'm going to create a new page or a new terminal. And I'm going to say yarn add socket IO client and I'm also going to install the types for it. So at type slash socket IO client and that's pretty much it. All right, so we're going to import it like this. And we're going to create an instance of the uh, socket IO client right here and we're going to pass in the URL to our server. Ours is on port 4000. Uh, and then what we can do is kind of similar to how we're using MIT here to listen for events and uh, emit events. We're going to do the same thing with the socket IO here. So here I'm going to say, and actually let's just create a new one. We're going to say socket dot uh, listen or on. And now we're going to say the event. I'm going to call this new operations. And we're going to have a function here. And this function is going to take a type, or we could call it editor ID is a better name for it, and the operations. And I'm just going to say any to keep, well, we could we create an, an object here, say editor ID is a string, and ops is an operation. It's actually, this is also going to be a string too. So when we're doing socket IO, we can only send over strings. So we're going to have to send the operations as a string and then parse them as JSON. All right, so I'm gonna move this bit up here and remove this emitter bit. 
Um, so operations, uh, we need to do json.parseon. And then we can keep this the same. Um, and then instead of type, I called it editor ID. And then we can go ahead and remove emit because we're not going to be using it anymore. And down here at the bottom, instead of saying emitter.emit, we are going to say socket.emit. The first one is going to be the name of the event. So I called it new operations. And actually, we could just say, Yep, I, I'll, I'm gonna. I don't think these names actually have to line up here, so I think I could call this whatever I wanted. But I'm gonna give them the same name. Actually, that may be confusing. Why don't I say new remote operations, and I'm gonna call this new operations down here. So I'm using different names, and we're gonna see how we line them up in a second. Um, but the second part here is going to be what we pass or send, so we can send some data when we emit an event. So here I'm going to say editor ID, and then I'm going to say ops, and I'm going to stringify the ops because operations is a, a big JSON object, or I believe it's actually a JSON array. But So we're gonna stringify that, and you'll notice the names are lining up with what I'm listening for, so the data that we emit, we're also going to get. All right, so basically what's going to happen is when this first renders, it's going to start listening for events. And so if we come over here and we just refresh, we're going to connect with our socket connection. So if we open up our node console, you'll see we have some users connecting um, and we connect every time we refresh the page. So perfect. So really the next step is whenever I type, we're emitting an event on the server, but we're not doing anything about it. So on the server here, um, and if we can see that example here, we can actually emit an event from the server and broadcast it to everyone. So we can say socket.io on and we can listen for events. So if we scroll down at the bottom, they have an example of it. Here's what they're doing. They're saying they're listening for an event and they're emitting an event and we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna paste this here. So in the socket here, this is I guess this access to the socket. So we're going to say on an event happening, I'm going to say new operations. We're going to get some data. So what's going to happen is when we call emit new operations and we pass this data in, it's going to do call over here to our server and the name should line up. And then the data, I'm going to emit in a new event. And when I emit it from the server, all of the clients are going to get it. So here I'm going to say new remote operations. And that name should line up with what I have here for what I'm listening for. And then I'm going to just pass in the data here. So we're going to give that a save and we're going to start this up. So basically the gist of what's happening is whenever I make a change in the editor, it's going to emit a change to the server. The server is going to listen for those changes and then it's going to emit a remote change which is going to be broadcast to everyone's uh, client or browser. So now when I type here, it is going to uh, send the operations over. So hello there from the other browser. And we can see it popping up over here. Hey dude. Um, and we can even see it syncing across six different editors but we don't even need to do that. We can just focus on one now. So where's that inner app? So there we have it. That is how we can do stuff with Slate.js and WebSockets and Socket.io to kind of simulate a Google Docs feel where whenever you're typing, the other person can, person can also be typing and it's going to send the operations back and forth and you basically are able to work on the same document at a time. So this is the base of the project. Uh, let me know in the description or not in the description, in the comments below what you'd like to see added to this project. Um, I have a few ideas what I might add, do for the next few videos to build this out, but I'm curious what ideas you'd like to see built with this framework, 
whether it is building some stuff with the editor or whether it is making the back end a little bit more complex. Let me know in the comments below if there's a styling or if there's a feature that you'd like to see added and I'll pick a couple of them and we will actually implement them on what we've built already.